great. Well, good morning. It's good to see you this morning. Um, and uh, let me just play, pray. Father, would we receive you afresh this morning? Amen. Well, um, it's actually a little bit funny that I've suggested a word like "ill" as part of the stuff we're doing. On because actually the, the implications about buildings, I've spent the last three years spending all my time trying to talk about the church as people, yet we're using a word that has such a strong link to buildings. But actually throughout scripture, it's a really, it's a really well used picture of what the church is called to be. And the question is, what are we building? How are we building it? And what kind, for example, of personal life are we trying to build? What kind of groups, whether it's our life groups or some of our outreach work, are we trying to build? And what about the whole church? What are some of the things the Bible is saying about building? And that's what we're going to look at this week. <coughs> it's funny when we look at different pictures uh, that we have. I'm going to try and share screen. So give me one second. Um, Is, has that come through? Yeah. So it's kind of when we're thinking about church, we often have lots of different pictures in mind. So top left is a church in Taiwan that they felt they needed to outreach to women. Um, we have visions of gathered worship sessions. We have famous leaders. We have a community of followers of Jesus. We have disciples learning together. We have people reaching out to other people. We have people on mission. We have the vision of a feast, of being around a table. We have serving the poor and the needy. What image do we have at what we're building? Let me just read the passage this morning to you. It's from Matthew 16, 13 to 20. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist. Others say Elijah and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. What about you? He asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you. Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. This particular passage is incredibly important. And it's particularly noted for Peter's recognition and profession of faith in Christ. However, also, it's one of the most hotly contested and debated passages in the New Testament. It has the theme of Christ's identity running all the way through it. It has Peter, Peter right in the midst of it, to perform Peter's life, of which is never dull has both the theme of the church and the kingdom of, of heaven together in one place and talked about in one place. And it has a beautifully balanced tension of the church being built by God, but also Peter have an active, having an active role in it. So I just want to talk about a couple of things that maybe can point us a bit towards building this morning. Firstly, it is about the rock of Revelation. I'm sorry you've got alliteration this morning, so you'll have to sit with me. The rock of Revelation. In verse 18, Jesus uses this lovely play on words. You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Jesus, the rock, will build his church on Peter, who's named by Jesus as the rock. If there's no rock, there's no building. It's a simple as that. Earlier on, we see that Peter has been blessed. He's grasped the truth. 
The truth of what? The revelation of who Jesus is. And then Jesus speaks these prophetic words over Peter. Simon, son of Jonah, he says of who he was, has become Peter the Rock. On which Jesus, eternal church, his new community is being built. And of course, history shows that's exactly what happened. One of the things about Matthew's gospel is Matthew continually draws a contrast between those who don't receive Jesus and those who do receive Jesus, between bad receivers and good receivers. Jesus' qualification, Peter, sorry, Peter's qualification here, Peter's role did not come from his personal abilities or his giftedness, even though some of that is very there. In fact, Peter is often seen and mocked for his erraticness and his up and downness. But what we see here is, it's simply receiving what God was revealing that qualified Peter. So are we receptive to what God is revealing to us today? Are we simply receiving and res responding to what God is revealing? Because that's a place where we build. That's a place in our own lives and in our church life where spiritual growth happens. On the rock of revelation. And secondly, just briefly, looking at the keys of the kingdom. Matthew is a story about the arrival of Jesus, Jesus the Messiah, proclaiming and announcing the good news of the kingdom of God. And this building metaphor that's used leads to discussion about how to get in. How do I get into this kingdom and the keys to it? Peter is given the God-given keys, the authority to open the door to those wanting to enter, over which history shows many, many did. But obviously it's only God who forgives. It's only God who welcomes in. But we can get that door open. So I wonder what keys or what authority do you think God has given you to open the kingdom of God to others? Remember here, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, is not the same as the church. The kingdom is the presence of the king and the arrival of his kingdom actually is the thing that creates the church. St. Swithin's has at its heart a mission to proclaim the reality of the presence of the kingdom of God. So who are we opening up the kingdom of God to? Peter used his keys to build God's church. I wonder who God has given us. Of course, I've sort of drawn a veil over the fact that actually this is quite shocking because we know a fuller story about Peter. But this reminds us again and again and again and again not to get ahead of ourselves. The story of us as Christians is one of grace and a gentle restorative power being made available in Jesus. None of us, none of us, not one of us, has failed so many times that God cannot use us. But we need to simply respond to what God is calling us to and revealing us to with uh, as we walk with him each day. He has given us some keys some keys to enable others to meet and to know and to understand and respond to the good news of the kingdom of God. And it's on that glorious rock that God's beautiful, glorious church of St. Swithin's is built. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your good news. Thank you that you call each one of us and are calling each one of us. Thank you in spite of our failings, do you never give up on us? You long to give us good gifts. Would you continue to reveal yourself to us and help us to hear your voice and then to step out in faith and help us to grow in receiving you. In Jesus' name, amen.